everybody and welcome back to another cultural examination for the wheel of time uh, before we dive into the video i wanted to hit on a few things obviously i have been a wall and missing for the last couple weeks uh, things at work have gotten absolutely nuts and so i kind of had to take a step back for a minute even though this is really what i'd love to be doing um, had to take a step back and, and get some of that taken care of but i do have a couple big videos planned uh, to come out here soon so hey sorry about the hiatus but i am back uh, I did actually, in the in my uh, hiatus though, uh, we did hit a big milestone on the channel. We hit over 100 subscribers. And that means that the contest that I was running for the limited edition Eye of the World copy has ended and we have a winner. So stay tuned for the end of the video uh, to see who the winner is. I'll announce your name and you just need to shoot me a private message and we'll work out the details of how to get you your copy. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the video. As you can see by the title, we're going to be doing a deep dive into one of my favorite groups of people in the book, the Ogier. As with all the other videos in this series, uh, we have got it divided into 10 sections that we're going to go through as we break it down. Those sections are as follows. History, demographics, geography, economy, governmental structure and law, military forces, overall power, notable landmarks, significance to the story, and what happens after the books. For the first eight sections, we're gonna have a spoiler rating of yellow, meaning that there will be minor spoilers that are general in nature, but no major plot spoilers. I will throw up a new spoiler warning before sections nine and 10, as those sections are gonna be a bit more spoilery in nature. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into our cultural examination of the Ogier. Ogier's history has largely been forgotten to outsiders over the many, many years of their existence. Most of the population of the Westlands believe that the Ogier are just myths. That's because they rarely leave their steading. There is evidence that the Ogier are not actually from Earth, but are rather from another world via either a portal stone or some other way. Uh, it is thought that the Ogier may have come to this world sometime either at the end of the First Age or at the beginning of the Second Age, also known as the Age of Legends. The Ogier spent much of the Second Age, again, the Age of Legends, thousands of years ago as gardeners, helping things grow alongside the Nim and the Aiel. They lived in their steading and worked very closely with the people and with the Aes Sedai. They were called a lantern in the old tongue and were very well respected. As the War of Power broke out after the Boar into the Dark One's prison was bored, the Ogier came to serve as the police force for the Aes Sedai, as Ogier were known to be fierce warriors despite their peaceful demeanor. At the end of the War of the Shadow, the Ogier sheltered the male Aes Sedai that were going mad in the steading, where the men could not channel and therefore could not go mad from the Dark One's taint on Sidene. Historians argue that this may have prolonged the breaking of the world, while others say it lessens the effect as there were fewer male Aes Sedai at once out ravaging the world. It is during this time that the male Aes Sedai gave the Ogier the ways as a thanks for their shelter. The Ogier could use the ways to travel from place to place. More on those later. During the breaking of the world, the steading were lost as the land and sea shifted so dramatically that the steading themselves were lost to the Ogier. The Ogier that survived this upheaval found themselves lost and wandering and looking for their steading, and it is in this time, a time the Ogier call the exile, that the Ogier developed what was called the longing. They would become sick and die the longer that they were away from the steading. Once the steading were rediscovered, Ogier on the westland side of the ocean retained the longing if they ever left their steading, only being able to leave for short periods of five to ten years before they would become sick and die. The Ogier, after finding the steading again, repopulated and began to use the talisman of growing, a gift from the male Aes Sedai, to grow a new waygate at each of the found steading. As the Ogier were rediscovering the steading, the original ten nations were coming into existence. The Ogier developed the ability to work stone, in addition to their ability to grow things. The men of the ten nations had Ogier stonemasons build some of the original great cities of the age. The Ogier planted large groves of great trees in these cities and placed a waygate in each of these cities so they could easily visit again. After this, the Ogier largely retreated into their steading, visiting the great cities to repair the stonework, but mostly staying away from the lands of men. There were also Ogier on the other side of the Earth Ocean after the breaking as well, in the continent of Shanchan. The steading are far more numerous in Shanchan, and the Ogier there were able to find the steading quickly after the breaking of the world, and settled into a lifestyle very similar to their counterparts across the ocean in the Westland. The Shanchan Ogier were forced into near constant fighting, however, on the continent, in the years after the breaking, unable to stay completely neutral in roughly 1000 FY when Arter Hawkwing's armies invaded and consolidated rule in Shanchan, 
The Uyghur were recognized as fierce fighters and were forbidden to bear arms outside of their studying. And some of the Uyghur were enlisted into the Shanxian government as bodyguards, but more on this later. The Ogier are the only other natural humanoid life form on the planet, with Trollocs and the Nim being just constructs. They have some similarities in look to humans, but for the most part, they look very different. Most Ogier stand almost 10 feet tall, with some being much taller than that. Ogier have long tufted ears and very broad snout-like noses. They have very large eyes, often being described as being as large as teacups, and eyebrows that hang down like tails. Ogier are described as having booming voices that sound like the buzz of bumblebees, with Ogier women having a slightly higher pitched buzz. In general, Ogier dress very much like humans, albeit very much larger humans. They wear coats of various lengths and wear very plain shirts, trousers, and dresses. Their clothing and style reflects their profound respect for nature and of living things, not wearing clothing made of animal skins. Ogier have much longer lifespans than humans, living three to four times longer than most humans. They are not even considered full adults until they reach 100 years old and are forbidden to leave their steading until this time. Some Ogier that are especially long-lived can be up to 500 years old. Ogier are notoriously deliberate and slow to act, taking time to think through most actions and believing that humans are hasty. This can be attributed mostly to their longevity and the relative safety that most Ogier live in, as they have very little urgency for survival as they live relatively cut off from the rest of the world. Ogier have a couple special abilities that set them apart from humans as well. They are very sensitive to the mood of a place, meaning they can feel evil even when it isn't tangible. For example, Ogier can feel the presence of shadow spawn in close proximity, or they can feel the Forsaken's effect on an area without specifically know what the cause was. Ogier have a very strong connection with nature and with growing plants and trees. Some Ogier have the ability to sing to plants to make them grow stronger and taller. These Ogier are called tree singers. They can create items from wood purely by singing that did not damage the parent plant and have high quality, creating sung wood, a highly valued commodity in the Westlands. Ogier have immense strength due to their size and also have the ability to see in the dark much more accurately than humans, being similar to wolves and the like. Ogier culture is really based around two things. The first is their love for nature and making things grow. They have a strong connection to nature and they grow great trees in their steading and near their steading. Their homes are built into the earth, further showing their respect and connection to nature. Their second great love is knowledge and learning. They value books and have a strong history of storytelling and collecting and passing along knowledge. With their greater lifespan, they are also able to compile knowledge over long periods of time. The Ogier have their own language, but when humans are around, they tend to speak and write in the common tongue. Ogier society is primarily matriarchal, with the mother or woman having more authority than their husbands, and all marriages being arranged by their mothers. The population of Ogier in the Westlands is between 250 and 500,000 Ogier at the time of the books, with roughly 6,000 Ogier living in each steading. The Ogier and Shan Chan are similar to their Westlands counterparts, although they are less pacifistic and more prone to fight. They do not suffer from the longing that the Westlands Ogier suffer from, as they were never separated from their steading for extended periods of time after the breaking of the world. It can be assumed that the population of the Shan Chan Ogier is higher due to their being more steading. Since the Ogier do not have a unified nation or civilization, there are no boundaries on maps for them other than the location of their steading. They are scattered all over the world. Most setting that are inhabited are located in remote areas, being in the mountains most of the time where they cannot be easily reached by humans. The closest setting to the human population is setting Sofu in Kyrian, which is a one-day ride from the nearest village. The setting themselves are unique in that they are shielded in some unknown way that prevents the One Power from being channeled or even sensed. You cannot wield the One Power power outside of the steading to, to affect anything on the inside either. Shadow spawn will not enter a steading unless forced. There is a feeling of peace and tranquility inside of the steading, and it can be speculated that the steading are pockets of the world from which the Ogier came, but it is unknown why the properties of the steading are the way they are. The economy of the Ogier is largely based around a couple of products and services that they offer to the human population. They are known to be the best stonemasons in the world, having built many of the greatest cities in the world. Although this is not their main talent, it is something that they picked up during the breaking of the world and have retained a great level of skill. They are used primarily to repair Ogier-built cities and do great tasks of stonework. 
Ogier also sells Sung wood, which has high value among the human population for its high quality and intricate designs. This is created by tree singers, which is now a rare talent among the Ogier. The Ogier also raise sheep, make cloth, and create fine metal work and jewelry. The Ogier use a system of apprenticeship to train younger Ogier in crafts and so that they learn their craft over a long period of time. This is another reason why Ogier work is so highly sought after, as the Ogier have such long lifespans that they become very skilled. The Ogier do not have a central governing body, but rather govern themselves in their steading. There is a council of elders that make governing decisions and passes judgment in the law. The elders' decisions are typically final, but any may petition the elders and speak at the Great Stump, which is a large flattened tree stump in each steading that is used to hold public meetings. The Ogier do not allow weapons in their steading as they are a very peaceful people. On extremely rare occasions, Ogier can hold a Great Stump, where all of the elders from the various steading meet to discuss issues that affect all of the Ogier. The Ogier are very pacifistic people and do not keep any type of standing military. They can be fierce warriors if provoked, but they are generally very slow to react and do not get into fights, but rather talk themselves out of problems. The Ogier and Shan Chan are a bit more militaristic, although not being truly aggressive, more so just open to fighting. There are some Ogier who are a part of the Death Watch Guards for the Shan Chan Empress. May she live forever. They are referred to as gardeners and are considered the most ferocious and deadly military organization in the Shan Chan Empire. However, few Ogier in the Shan Chan become gardeners. <music> the Ogier are not generally thought to be a great power in the world. While individually they are more powerful than a human, their low population and seclusive nature keep them out of the events of the world for the most part. They are very skilled in crafts and can be ferocious in battle, but it cannot be said that they are an integral part of the world economy military, or social power structures. In regards to notable structures, other than the studding themselves, the only known landmark the Ogier have are the ways, which sit right outside of the studding and in some major steadings that they built groves in during the time of the Ten Nations, almost 3,000 years ago. The ways are a gift from the male Aes Sedai who were sheltered in the studding during the breaking of the world. They were created so that the Ogier could move safely between the studding. The ways are a passage through a place outside time and space through the use of the one power that allowed the Ogier to travel from place to place very quickly. The interior of the ways is a series of islands that are connected by bridges over the nothingness. These islands contain other way gates that lead to other places. There are stones called the guiding that indicate a way of travel if you wish to travel to a certain place. The islands themselves contained fruit trees so that travelers could eat along their journey. The ways were also lit as brightly as the sun. Due to the ways being created with Sidene, the male half of the one power that was tainted by the dark one, they began to deteriorate under the presence of that taint. They went dark gradually and the bridges began to crumble. There is now also an entity called the Black Wind or Makin Sin that consumes the souls of anyone or anything that comes in contact with them in the ways. They are no longer safe for travel. Before we get to section 9, let's go ahead and throw up another spoiler warning. These final two sections will carry a spoiler warning of red, meaning there will be major spoilers, so watch at your own risk. The Ogier in general are not super vital to the story, but serve as a side group of characters that enrich the story and give it some history. Loyal, everyone's favorite Ogier, serves as our guide as the reader, as he teaches not only the characters in the story, but he also teaches us the history of the world and of the Wheel of Time. Most of the significance the Ogier play throughout the story is done through the character of Loyal, and he's going to get his own character analysis, so we'll leave it at that. Now what happens after? Now this is actually an interesting discussion. Towards the end of the novels, in Knife of Dreams, the Ogier meet at their great stump to discuss the opening of the Book of Translation and leaving the world to escape the Dark One. They decide to stay because if the Dark One would win, they would not have anywhere to escape to. But this brings up interesting discussions of what happens after the Dark One's defeat. The Book of Translation is said to contain the information about where the Ogier are from, how they came to our world, and how they could leave it when they choose to. What we do know is that they will leave at some point, as the Ogier are not known in our time, and they will return sometime before the Age of Legends happens again, as this is the nature of the Wheel of Time. I think it can be surmised that the Ogier could leave this world after the last battle, now that the Dark One is defeated, but this is purely speculation. So that's it, my cultural analysis of the Ogier. Please leave me a comment below about what you think of the Ogier. Is there anything I missed? Also, please take a minute if you have not done so and hit the subscribe button if you are enjoying my content. It really helps the channel grow and encourages me to keep making Wheel of Time content. Also, as I announced at the beginning 
of the video, we do have a winner in our Eye of the World limited edition contest. I did a random drawing and the winner is, drum roll please, Twiggy Leon. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. Uh, please send me a private message so we can have the book shipped out to you. Thanks so much for everyone that was a part of that contest. Until next time, thanks. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. A mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?